Hello and welcome to the Speaking Archaeologically Lecture on the Basholi Paintings of Nal Damyanti. Although the beginnings of Pahari painting are obscure and uncertain, the style of Basholi is a name which is generally given to the early work from the hill states. This style, which is sometimes called early Guler and sometimes pre Kangda, is at once experimental and pragmatic in nature. It leans on the side of naturalism and is lyrical and romantic in its quality. Our discussion today will revolve around a particular set of paintings from this particular school known as the Nal Damyanti series. It must be borne in mind that even though most of the Basholi paintings generally use the themes of Mahabharat and Ramayan, the Nal Damyanti series comes from the Van Parvan of Mahabharat and is perhaps the most secular episode in the entire Mahabharat series, despite its religious nature. Let us first discuss the context of these paintings before actually launching into their nature and character. In the Vanaparvan of Mahabharat, there is a long episode known as the Nalo Pakyan. Here, Yudhishthir, with his brothers and Draupadi in the forest of Kamakya, is in exile from his kingdom. Arjun has gone to the regions of Indra to obtain divine arms, and Yudhishthir goes on over in his mind the events of the last few years encompassing the loss of his kingdom and the misfortunes of his family one after another. At this point, the great sage Brihadasva arrives in the hermitage and seeing Yudhishthir in a disturbed state of mind, attempts to offer solace by telling him about another great and noble king who had suffered at the hands of outrageous fortune and lost his entire kingdom at the throw of dice. This episode is the story of Nal, the king of Nishad. It begins with the love story of Nal and Damyanti, where a golden swan acts as a messenger between them. It then goes on to discuss the swayamvar arranged by Damyanti's father, King Bhim of Vidarbh, and the flocking together of kings and guardians of all quarters to that swayamvar for the fame of Damyanti's beauty and the nobility of the house of Bhim has reached far and wide. There are then passages in which gods themselves are anxious to win the hand of Damyanti in the Swayamvar and make Nal their messenger to plead their case. However, Damyanti chooses Nal in the Swayamvar. The gods then play a ruse upon her and each assume the form of Nal himself. Damyanti eventually gets out of this situation by praying to the gods to assume their real form. After this, Nal and Damyanti are married and they live for many years in felicity. But then one day, the evil god of Iron Age, Kali, who has vowed to avenge himself upon Nal for having Damyanti, enters his body and the entire tenor of Nal's life changes. He then falls prey to common weaknesses and, in a game of dice, he loses everything to Pushkar, his brother. Nal and Damyanti both have to go in exile and are separated by an unlikened fate. Each goes through severe trials, but eventually Damyanti reaches the palace of her father, while Nal, with Kali raging through his blood, has yet to suffer more. He becomes misshapen and dark after an encounter with Karkotak, the serpent, and then takes up employment as a charioteer with King Rituparna, from whom he learns the secret of throwing dice. Thus, after long trials, he is reunited with Damyanti. Kali is ejected from his body and he regains his kingdom by engaging his brother in yet another game of dice in which he wins back all. This Upakyan, involved as it is, is then rounded up by Sage Brihadashv by saying that the mere hearing of this story 
is productive of much merit. Textually, this legend of Nal Damyanti gets referred to in various other texts than the Mahabharat. For example, it gets referred to in the Ramayan. There is mention of it in the Bajisnehi Samhita, the Shatpat Brahman, and in Purans such as the Padma Puran, the Ling Puran, the Vayu Puran, the Matsya Puran, the Brahmanad, and the Harivamsh. It also finds great detail in texts such as the Brihat Katha Manjari and the Katha Sarit Sagar. Other mentions also come from the Nalopakhyan in Nesad by Sri Harsh, also known as the Nesad Charit. The illustrated manuscripts of the 17th century of the Naldamiyanti Ras therefore derive their inspiration from all of these textual sources. And it seems that the painter, the pandit and the texts come into a combined interplay in specifically the Basholi paintings. When it comes to the Naldamiyanti paintings of Basholi, the Nesad Charit was chosen by the painter or the patrons for being illustrated. Although the paintings are very faithful to the indicators within the Nesad Charit of particular scenes, several miniatures also bear inscriptions in Dogri dialect at the back, indicative of original texts based on some local versions of the story of Naldamyanti. This is still a very popular version of illustration among Basholi painters of the present day. In the video before you, you see a modern-day Basholi artist illustrating Damianti accusing the moon. This goes with the canto from Sri Harsh's text, which reads, Friend, ask the moon clearly this. Inert moon, from what teacher didst thou learn the generosity of thy heat? Is it from the poison that hath withered Shiva's throat, or from the submarine fire in the ocean? The painter tries and condenses the suffering of Damyanti and her charges against the moon in this painting. An older version of this painting can still be seen showcased in the Amar Singh Palace in Jammu. Here, Damyanti is depicted as the Viroha Kanthita Naika. Among the first illustrators of the Naral Damyanti series in Basholi School of Art come very famous painters, including Ranju and Nensuk. Ranju or Ranja is accredited with creating sanguine drawings of the Nal Damyanti series. Among the various set of paintings also, there is a question of discontinuity. For example, the collection in Maharaja Amar Singh Palace in Jammu stops abruptly, while the collection of Ananda Kumara Swami's Nandamyanti drawings start from the point from which the paintings of Jammu suddenly stop. Other versions of the Nandamyanti paintings can be found in the Chandigarh Museum and also the National Museum at Delhi. Other museums, including the Lahore Museum, house some drawings. Unlike the illustrated manuscripts of the Mughal court, such as the Anvare Suhaili or the Hamza Nama, the paintings of Naldamyanti are richer in emotional content. The paintings thus provide the painter with a restricted and rather harder theme to deal with. This is primarily because of the high lyrical and poetic quality of Sri Harsha's text in his detailed description of the cities as well as oral imagery such as the roaring of the oceans, the sounds made by birds the lighting of the moon, the tormenting nature of the clouds and details of the swan which acts as the messenger in addition to 
The extreme art historic quality of these paintings, the paintings of Nalda Myanti, are also an excellent subject for studying them in juxtaposition with the Ras theory of literature. Here, Damianti in her various moods shows different exhibitions of the Ashtanaikas. Similarly, various Rasas can be seen in the moods and depiction of Nal, who sometimes goes out of his palace in the procession, at other times captures the swan and sometimes is shown warring with rivals. The Basholi school of art therefore reaches its pinnacle with the paintings of the Nal Damianti series and perhaps is one of the finest specimens of Pahari schools rivaled only by the successive school of Kangra art.